Okay, we're gonna start with calf raises. Lift up both heels and lower. And lift up and lower. And up and lower. And up and up. <laughs> That's it, adding on. So I'm gonna tilt you up a little bit, keep going. Nice. So you're getting your calves warmed up. Each toe head has equal weight. The tendency is that our body is gonna roll out to the pinky toe, but it's not meant to have all that weight on it. So we're gonna have each metatarsal head, each toe head has equal weight. You're gonna feel like your knees are long, but they're soft. You're really making sure you don't let your knees bend backwards if you're hypermobile. So take an inhale and an exhale. I'm gonna to turn to my side, keep going. When you do these and your arms are overhead, it's really easy to get too sway back. So what we're doing is keeping some tone right here at the top of the rib cage. The abs are pulling down just a little. You can feel the 5% or 10% grade tone in the abs so that your low back doesn't get too inwardly sway. So I'm gonna keep talking, keep working your calves. I know you love it. So this is like a sandwich around the core. There's some tone here and there's a little tone here. This piece of bread, this low back shouldn't be more toned than the abs to preserve a healthy low back inward curve. All right, let's do three more. We're gonna be adding on to this. Three, look the sun shining on my face like I'm an angel. Two and one. And now the next one is gonna be a booty. We're gonna lower the booty back and come back up. Lower and lift, lower and lift. Keep going. Now your heels are heavier than your toes. You see how the glutes are going way back? It's almost like someone's offering you a chair and then they're taking the chair away from you. So your booty's following that chair or you're using a public restroom and you don't wanna to commit to touching the seat. From the front, the knees are in line with the second toe. It's almost like I have a Nerf football between my knees. My toes are so light that I could lift them at any moment. That makes sure that the heels are heavier. That makes sure that my booty gets the connection and not my knees. My knees, your knees should feel fabulous. Only go down as low as your knees feel really good. All right, three more. You're gonna feel the heart rate getting up a little bit too because these are big muscle groups. One more, and now we're going out to a bigger squat. Heels are wide. You wanna think about a sumo wrestler or a goddess. Your heels are heavier. We're gonna add on some arms. Your dynabands heavy or handy because we're gonna be adding on in a moment. You guys look great. Four more, three more, two more, one more. Now we're going to add a layer. Grab your Dynaband. At any moment, if you need to get rid of one of these uh, body parts, you can. So if you're adding on, your arms are up, you're going to pull down your band, lift up, and lower. Now your heels lift, your band comes down. If that's too much to layer, just do the arms. And lift, and lower. And lift, and lower and exhale. Now check in with your wrist. Your wrists are gonna be fairly neutral, so they're not bent wildly backwards. Your shoulder blades are down the back so that your neck is free and clear. There's no congestion in your neck. Exhale, pull. From the side, you're making sure your low back is not going inward any more than usual. You've got some tone right here in the abdominals. Take three more two and one. Now take this Dynaband behind your back, right around the shoulder blades. Give me that little sumo squat. Exhale, hold that sumo squat if you can. I know you can, press out. Let's check in. Your palms are open. Your exhale presses you. You guys look beautiful, good job. Your toes are so light, you can lift them at any moment. And those of you that are born with flat arches like I am, when you lift your toes, you activate your posterior tibialis and it helps your foot create an arch. So you feel that arch lift, like you could put quarters underneath that mount, between the mound of the big toe and the inner heel, and then lower the toes softly and you'll help preserve that arch. 
like there's a suction cup underneath your arch. All right, take four more. Four, three, nice, two, and one, and perfect. And we're gonna come back up. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's my assistant with bug spray. All right, now we're adding on. <laughs> we're gonna take a normal squat. Let me show you from the side. It looks like this, this. Nice. All right, looks like that. We got it. Nice. Now, if you can, we're gonna add on a pull. Stand, pull. Stand, I'm gonna show you from the side, pull. Yes, pull. What you're doing is activating your rear deltoid, those muscles, your shoulders in the back, those muscles are so important to stay strong because most of our activities are forward where our eyes are looking. So we're activating the rear shoulder. Four. Hi, Jenny. Welcome. Come on in, girl. Three, two, and one. Wonderful job. Now we're going to take the palms and face them up. Glue your elbows by your side like you're holding on to a tennis ball underneath the arm and open up. This is called external rotation. See how my wrists are flat. This is not a huge move. It's not going to feel like the squat at all. These are the small muscles that keep the humerus, the shoulder safe. The external rotators, the, the, they're specifically posterior deltoid, infraspinatus, and tres minor. What they do is keep the shoulder safe and they complement all of the forward activity that we do during our day. So we have healthy shoulders forever. Your wrists are flat, your elbows are glued, and it's not a huge motion. You're gonna feel it in the back of the shoulder in the supportive muscles. Anytime somebody gets to shoulder rehab, they almost always get these. We're doing it prehab. Good, you can sit down in a chair if you'd like to make it a little bit of a booty work as well. All right, we have four more. Looking good, three, shoulders are soft. Two, neck is soft, I mean, and one. Now stand back up, flip your palms. This is bow and arrow. Hold this arm like it's an anchor. Press out that arm. You can make this harder by grabbing more of your strap. I'm gonna challenge us with a little bit of a chair here. So keep booty heavy, heels heavy, and press. This is triceps, this is the back of the arm. This is a really common place for excess fat deposition, but you can help aesthetically just by toning that muscle underneath. It's also important for getting out of low chairs or if you fall, that's the muscle that catches you. Six, neck is soft. Seven, if it's too much on your legs, then you can stand up. Eight, nine, we are gonna stand up after this one. 10, stand up. And then the other side, you can make sure you don't have any tension you're holding on to. Relieve that excess tension, press out. 10 bow and arrows. This arm is an anchor. This arm is exhale pressing. Four. Heels heavy. Five. Good, Karen. Six. Good, Jean. Good, Rick. Nice. Eight. Good, Jean. Good, Polly. Now, after that 10th one, come back up. Perfect. Now, wrap that just for a moment. Your arms are going to be like you are hanging out laundry on the clothesline in the backyard and it's a windy day. So, your arms are just hitting your low back and your abs, perfect. We're gonna add on, after you take a sip of coffee to stay hydrated, we're gonna add on. And the right arm is gonna hold on. The left, or the left hand's gonna go to the low back area. You're gonna exhale and press up and exhale. Triceps, anytime your arm's overhead, it's very easy for the low back to get too swayed inward. Lordotic. So you want to keep your abs on, your ribs are over your pelvis, not in front of. Five, six. That top wrist is flat. Let me show you from the close view. See how it's flat and it's not getting wildly bent backwards? I'm in control of my wrist, not bent. Ten, eleven, you got it. Oh, I love that fireplace, Shireen. Twelve, thirteen, and control it on the way down. It's called working the negative, working the essential. Let's do five more to burn it out. Five, so you're controlling it. Exhale, four, you have some ab tone. Three, exhale, two, hang in there. Arms are looking beautiful. One, and gently come out. Get some blood flow to that arm. Shake it out at any time. Other hand takes it. 
You're gonna put it behind your back. Right hand onto the low back. Check those abs. Anytime your arms are overhead in Pilates or in life, it's really easy to get into that low back. So we're gonna we're gonna practice it here in Pilates so it's easier to maintain that good lumbopelvic form when we're in life. Exhale, four, five, you guys look great. Six, check out the posture, your ears in line with the shoulders, seven from the side, the head's never ahead of the rest of the body. Eight, we're, we're helping correct forward head syndrome here in these exercises. 10, training the neck where we want it to be. 11, 12, control it on the way down, you're looking great. 13, those of you that have impeccable balance and want to add on about five, uh, five more of these, but with calves, so up, up to you, five. Looking good, four, way to take that challenge. Three, good Karen, bow and arrow works too, right? And one, and then shake that out. Now, one of my favorite muscle groups, biceps. We're gonna grab the band, put it right in the middle. One or two feet, depending on how tall you are, how your band, how long it is. But it, you could try two. Now bend both elbows and exhale. So act like, it's like you're holding the hammer. Or if you have the handles, you can flip your palms and make them up. Your shoulders are down the back. What I'm really making sure of is that our shoulders don't poke forward. I wanna practice good shoulder blade stability when we're doing these exercises. That way it's easy to remember when we're in life picking up objects. Elbows bending. You guys look great. Knees are long but soft. Exhale as you bend. I like how you're controlling it on the way back. Four more. Now wait, if, keep going, I'm gonna talk a little bit. Keep going to your challenge. That's the idea is that you're challenged in the final repetitions. I'm gonna talk a little bit. So with a band, you can go higher with resistance than you can with a free weight. With a free weight, you run out of tension right about there. So that's why it's okay to do a fuller range of motion. Let's do one more. And now come out of that. And we're gonna use this for a stretch. This is one of my favorite stretches. Go back and look how it's going behind me. And I'm, I'm not holding this with a lot of tension. This is more about mobility than it is about strength. The scapula, the shoulder blades glide up and down the back. That's what healthy scapula do. So I wanna feel them glide down my back and I wanna feel them glide up, but no tension in my upper trapezius. I never have any congestion in that neck. That looks great. Your wrists are fairly flat. Now find a place that feels super good to hold. Just hold it. Five, four, three, two. Let the arms down. Do another stretch, a place that you can hold it. Feel that uh, wrist are straight. Five, four, three, two. Rib tuck a little. Bring it down. Do it again. Up and back, another place. And then let it go. Now take it wide, pull down and down and exhale and exhale. Now, if you want to add on two, three, four, five, and six, and seven and eight and nine, getting that booty stronger. You're doing great. 10, your knee is tracking with your second toe. 11, exhale, 12 and 13. You look so good, 14 and 15. Looking great. All right, let's add on a little bit from here. Watch this bonus pulse. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, gently come back out, looking gorgeous. All right, let's add on. Step on that band, right in the middle, with both feet, or two, depending on how big your band is, how tall you are, how tight it is. And this is an upright row. Your elbows are higher than your wrist. Your elbows are higher than your wrist. It's almost like you're zipping up a big parka. 
if theoretically you lived in a cold place and you needed a big coat and you're zipping up your parka or zipping up a, a pair of uh, long johns, up, elbows high, look at your wrist, make sure they feel pretty neutral. We don't want any strain in the thumbs or the wrist. All right, I like how your neck is free. Knees are long but soft. These are shorter levers. That's why we can get by with more. Three, two, and one. Perfect. Shake it out. Now we're going to use one band, one foot, and grab a sip of coffee if you need. Then we're going to take a deltoid. Pull. I'm so glad to have you guys. Let's step on one foot. Sorry, step on one band with one foot. Don't step on your foot. This is going to be a forward deltoid raise. Now at first, your first couple are usually like pancakes on Sunday morning. They're not so pretty. So you just adjust and you make it right. You need some tension right in the deltoid, but not in the neck. So sometimes I'll put my hand where I want my brain to focus. So I have all my senses working for me. Six, now have the little ab tone. Seven, eight, nine. Now see if you can do five more. Your knees are long, five, four, three, two. Okay, one, now switch it up. Just shake it out, take this other one. Step on that band. The first couple may not be perfect. One, so you adjust, two, three, four, five, six. Very good, seven, your neck is soft. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Shake it out. We're going to change it up. We're going to go out to the side. You're going to go out. But I want you to notice how my hand is still ahead of my body. It's not drifting behind. Four, I'm going to turn. Five, six, deltoid, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Other side, now you're gonna step on this. You're gonna go out to the side, but your hand is slightly ahead of you. Two, three, four, five, and I'm controlling it on the way back down. Six, good Karen, seven, good Jenny. Eight, this is a lateral raise, nine. Now we did five more. Notice how there's no tension in the neck. Notice how the deltoids do in the work. It's ahead of my body, so it's in a safe, what we call a scapular plane. Two and one. I love it, take it out. You're doing so good. Now we're gonna go for a swim. We're gonna take this band behind us. Um, let's optional, sit down in a, in a little chair. Now, I want you to pretend that you're doing a breaststroke. Your palms are up. We're going to just be palm up the whole time here. It's a little way to sneak in external rotation into our workouts. If you feel good, press that body up with your booty, with your heels. Your knees still track with your second toe. Palms are up. Good. I love it. So you can create more tension. By grabbing more band if you need it. All right, we're gonna change it up, get ready, reverse it. Go around, you got it. Now, if your legs are getting tired, you can just stand up and do this normally. Exhale, press out. Good, Karen, four, good. Jenny, you're doing great. You can put the band behind you for a little bit more tension. It's not that you're doing it wrong. That a girl, that's my girl. You're gonna feel the scapula. You're gonna feel the, the band is at the uh, lower edge of the scapula. The good news about the, the bands is you weren't hurting anything. You were just creating tension from a different force, getting a different muscle. So that's one reason I really like the band. Take two more. You feel how the muscles, the heart rate's getting up. Stay here. A little bonus. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, come up 
extra bonus goddess in high heels lift up those heels lower i've got my heels in the air press my heels are in the air so work in the calves you got it five four three two one all right take a moment bonus heels up lower with your heels in the air lower you are balancing you're getting those ankles stronger but this is why it's so important each metatarsal head each toe head has equal weight we're not letting the pinky toe take it all we're not letting the ankle sickle outward like they tend to want to do 90 percent of all sprains are outward inversion they call it so you don't want to let the ankle sickle keep some pressure in that first second toe three look how good everybody's doing two and one all right let's go back to our beautiful stretches arms go back hold so this is a chest and a shoulder stretch if you take one stretch away from the class and you sneak it in your day this would be one because it's opposite the way that our eyes are drawing our body forward check your wrists they're not wildly bent backwards they're pretty flat my ears in line with the shoulder from the side view i've got my abs on hold that five four three two inhale and then exhale let that go all right we're going to grab a sip and grab some weights i'd say somewhere between three and eight pounds two and eight pounds for deltoids coffee if you need it now take your palms and open up like a t and open up good you got it three four now if you don't have a weight you can always use some water bottles or a soup can and six and seven and eight oh, i'm so proud of you guys nine ten now can you do five more no tension in the neck you're doing this and your neck is free. Now leave your hands low and just roll your shoulders. Oh, it feels so good. Now we're gonna take those same weights here, push up, push up. These can be done seated in a chair as well. Um, Polly, I know you like to do them in a chair. That is just fine. Five six seven good when your arms are up there you go nice Polly. eight when your arms are up your ribs are pulling down nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and fifteen take a moment roll through your shoulders that should feel really good roll now take those weights and i like to put the edges together put them behind and push and push four good five nice six seven gorgeous eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen yep fourteen this is it fifteen let's take a break lower those down for just a moment and you can take your arms like your um clothes drying on the back clothesline and the wind is blowing let them be free and sway and they even hit your waist and they hit your back five four three two and one grab the weights again same probably the same between three and eight go forward forward 
good. Now, notice how I'm not letting my body lean back. You got it. Neck is long. Shoulders are working. I like it. Okay. Doing so good. Check out your wrists when they're ahead of you. You can see, are they neutral? Are they pretty flat? <clears throat> Five more sets. Four more sets. Three, two, one. Now we're gonna um, watch this. Pitch forward. See how my back is like a table? Now I'm gonna open up, almost like I'm making the letter T. My elbows are soft though. Open, open. I like it. Your back is flat. Your knees are bent to keep that. Uh, good, I like it, Karen, you're doing great. I'm looking at everybody, five, four, good. Catherine, you can bend over a little bit more and it'll be in the line with your rear delt. See what I'm trying to do? See my rear delt, it's active. If I'm up here, it's medial delt, which is fine. We already did that though. So we're getting the back delt. I like it. All right, let's do two more. Good, Shereen. And we're good, Polly, that's exactly right. And then come back, nice. Now, if you wanna have your weight, you can grab that heavier weight. I'm gonna take us through some bicep curls and you can pull up. Now, if you want, you can use your band or your Dynaband here, your Dynaband or your elastic tubing. You don't have to use the weights. If you don't have weights, you can also use those cans of soup. So there's all sorts of clever ways. When you lower your arms, your elbows are soft and you don't let them lock out. You also, you notice you would run out of tension. So if I were to hang out up here, I don't really feel anything. I'm hanging out in my bones. So with the free weight or cans of soup, whatever you're using, you just go up to where you still feel tension. All right, let's do five more. These are your holding muscles. Four. Three. Two. And one. All right, we are going to let go of this. Keep it handy, though. And take an arm sway like you're drying those clothes on the back line. You're doing so great. And we're going to do a booty strengthener. So lift and spread your toes and act like you're drumming your fingers on the table. Each toe individually works. If it doesn't, get down there and make it work. We sometimes forget about our precious little feet and that's what our foundation is. So lift and spread your toes. Now leave the left foot down and let's do right foot on the calf or the inner thigh. So what I'm doing is working booty, left booty. If you're not sure, touch it. You're making sure you're not holding, watch your instructor fall. You're making sure you're not holding a child on your hip. You're gonna keep your hip into the midline. That ensures that the glute medius is working. And that's what a lot of people have dysfunction in. So come on up with your arms if you'd like. If you wanna add on a super fun pose, right elbow, pat yourself on the back, left fingertips might reach your ponytail or your shirt or the fingers and hold. You're very tall, three, four, five. Oh, you guys look great, six. Yeah, arms up is another option. Great, Polly, seven, eight, good, nine, 10, 11, 12. And, um, Polly and Karen, what I like is that your hands are slightly ahead of you. You can see them in your peripheral vision. Yep. Good. Keep going. Really tall. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Hands out. They come together at the heart and then lower. So these legs are strong and straight. Lift and spread your toes. Now you're gonna put this foot on the inner thigh or the calf. You're making sure this hip doesn't push out. And we know that one-legged balance is, uh, we can use this as a predictor for fall. So we wanna use it to our advantage. We wanna improve this. If you're adding on, bend your left elbow, right hand works its way up, lift your chin and hold, you're really tall. Oh, that looks good, Jenny. Good. 
It's almost like you want to see how little work you can get by with here. How soft can you do this pose? Good. Another trick is to keep your eyes softly focused. In yoga, it's your drishti. It's a soft focus. So you have a calm determination when you're here. A gentle strength. Your jawline is parallel to the floor and that optimizes your vestibular system, your inner ear balance system. Very good. Five, four, beautiful. Three, two, inhale. And on your exhale, gently lower. Oh, I'm so glad, hands together, lower that foot. Very good. Now we're going to add on, remember that squat we did? This is your possibility. See how I'm in a squat? If you'd like to, and let me show you from the side, my booty's way back, not up here. I'm not biasing my knees, I'm biasing my booty. Optional, which is really fun. I hope you take it. Look how I'm stable in my pelvis. Keep that right thigh up. Now I'm in a one-legged squat. You could go lower 90 as long as you keep those hips stable. This is up to you. I'm going to count to 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, knee in line with a second toe, 3, 2, now with control, let your transition be your posture, transition, transition, transition. Your transitions matter. Awesome. That's great. Let's do this again. So just like in life, your transitions are as important as the actual posture. Heels heavy. Knees in line, second toe. That could be your posture. Ukkatasana is a really strong posture. Otherwise, we're adding on. This is going to build one-legged strength. A lot of times you have a dominant mover leg that's a little stronger, up to 10% than the other, and you have a dominant stabilizer. So we're, we're evening things out deliberately here, intentionally. Holding, 10. Neck is soft. You might have to change your gaze. Nine, there's no wrinkles in the neck. Eight, seven, you've got that calm determination. Six, five, four, three, two. Inhale and on your exhale, slowly come back up. Great. One-legged calf raises, and then we're going to go down to the floor and work calves. It's going to be amazing. Wrap your right foot around your left. Use something to hold on to. Just 10. Just do 10. Going up and two. Yeah, use something because it's a lot easier than trying to balance on this. Three. There you go, Karen. Four. Straight up and down. Five. I like it, Jenny. Six. Good, Polly. And if that bothers your hip at all, if you have any kind of... Um, uh, sacroiliac dysfunction going on, you are welcome to do this bilaterally, both feet. So you wanna make sure you serve yourself. Yeah, both feet's fine. We're gonna do 10 on the other side. Wrap that foot and see if you notice, oh yeah, that's the ankle that I've sprained 4,000 times. Or if you notice any differences, this is your chance to sort of clarify function in each leg. Paying attention, you go up to that second toe more than the others, just a little bit more, but all the toes have weight. Five. Linking breath with movement. Six helps calm the parasympathetic system for healing. Seven. Eight. Very good. I love it. Nine. So proud of you. Ten. Wonderful job. We're going to meet on the floor for some great calves. But first, let's do a little bit of a um, down dog just to stretch out those calves. So you're going to go down. Heels heavy or heels towards the floor. Have your foam roller handy if you have one. If you don't, you know I'll cue you without one. Uh, just hold that calf stretch. Shoulder blades are down the back. Neck is soft. Inhale. And on your exhale. All right, possibilities include your normal plank on your hands or your elbows. And hold this. Hold 10. While your instructor grabs her foam roller. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Now we're going to add on a subtle cue. Act like you're trying to pull your elbows towards your feet and your feet towards your elbows. All that does is really firm it up. It's a little more isometric. Keep going. Three, two, 
Now rest for a moment. If you have your roller, grab your roller. Place it underneath your shins. All right. Now this is so fun. You're gonna love this. Turn your toes towards each other. If your tibia, your bones are sort of uh, exposed here, or if you're like me, you have a really hard uh, foam roller. You're gonna lift up your booty in a pipe. Lift up, you may have to adjust. Lift up your hips like you're making a V. Feel your abs, keep your knees long on this one. We'll bend them later. So it's okay if you have to adjust your roller every now and then. Lift up and pipe and lower with control. Three, good, you guys look great. Two, if you don't have a roller, just hold a plank and lift your hips a little bit into what we call dolphin and yoga. One more. Now watch how I take a rest pose. You can do it like this as well. I'm gonna go right into an inchworm. One of my favorite abs, elbows down, lift up, bend your knees, pull them under, extend like plank again. Bend your knees and extend. Exhale, crunch. So every now and then you have to adjust, but it's definitely worth it because the abs on the roller are so effective. Pull your knees under and extend. Keep going, I'm gonna talk. Your forearms are pushing so strong into the floor so that your scapula are flat on your back like lily pads on a pond. There's no wrinkle or congestion going on in your upper back. Your scapula are flat. That's good shoulder blade stability. So we're also building strength around those shoulders as well as the abs. Take two more. Take one more, take some type of rest pose. Now we're gonna take a ski move called mogul. We're gonna take our knees to our left elbow and our knees to our right. If you don't have your phone broken, just hold it like a long way. Or like the back of the screen. You know? Knees to left corner. Straight. Knees to right corner. Straight. Exhale. Good. Now check in with your neck and your uh, upper trapezius. There's no tension in that neck. Exhale. Your shoulder blades are pressing strong. Your arms are pressing strong into the floor. Your exhale pulls you under. Exhale. Good. And take two more. Two. And exhale. One. Recover. I like a booty in the air recovery because it slightly decompresses your low back spine. So I'm a really big fan of that because gravity is usually pulling the spine the other way. I want to take advantage of that in this class. Decompress the lumbar spine. Now this one's super fun. You're going to love it. You're going to lift up into pike with a little bit of an oblique twist. So it's kind of like putting those knees together. It looks like this. You lift your hips, but you see how I'm a little bit rotated and go back. Lift your hips and go back. Now, if you don't have a foam roller, hold that plank. They're gorgeous or do a bound angle, but lift your hips and rotate. You're going to love them. You're going to love them tomorrow. And the next day, we're going to do four and three. Internally rotate the legs if that foam roller is on your tibia. You don't want your bones to hurt at all. Now rest. You're doing so good. This next one's called four points of light. It's almost like you're making a cross with your knees. I'll demo or you can follow along with my audio cue. You're going to inhale and plank. Exhale, pull your knees in neutrally, pause. Rotate left, go center. Rotate right, go center, press back. That was one. Here we go, it's gonna be great. Let's go, pull it under, rotate left, center. Rotate right, center, go back. Pull it under, wait for it, go right, center. Left, center, go back. Let's do it again. Under, left, center, right, center, go back, left set, pull it under, go right, center, left, center, go back, recovery. You're doing great. All right, side plank. I'm going to double up my mat because I like to keep my arm bones happy. I don't want my exercise to hurt me in the wrong ways. So that bone's happy. And just hold a plank. <clears throat> All right, hold. All we're doing now is establishing stability. 10, nine, before we add mobility. Eight, seven, six, five, really strong. This hip doesn't sag. Four, three, two, come out with your hip lower. Let's do the other side. And place that, I'm gonna double up my mat because 
it's like my Thai yoga teacher told me from Thailand, your body is precious. Make correction so it not be in pain. He was so sweet, but he was right. So make a correction to have your bones happy. 10, lift up your hips. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lower, reverse plank. Your ankles are on top. But if you don't have one, just put your feet on the floor. You gotta make sure your knees don't lock out. That's why I like the roller on these. Fingertips towards your boot tape. If you need to modify, just bend your knees like a reverse table. Lift up. Now, if you feel really good, you can lift up your right leg and your left leg. Right here, your main goal is if you're hypermobile, you're not letting that knee bend backwards. Lift up your chest, lift up your hips, look down at your toes and do four of whatever you're doing with integrity. Following through, two, and one. Inhale, lift your hips, and exhale, lower. Perfect, that was really good. We're gonna add on, go back to the front plank. The elbows, I'm gonna adjust my mat. So the elbows are gonna be down on the floor again. Your roller is underneath your lower legs. If you don't have a roller, just do plank. Now hold this, elbows are strong, pushing in. Your elbows are underneath your shoulder. If you'd like to add it on, you're gonna move forward and back just a little from the shoulder joint. It's almost like you're going through a hollow two. Make sure your belly doesn't drop. And inhale and exhale. Good, Polly, that's great. Four, good three, three, two. All right, rest for a moment, any way you need to. We're gonna go back, plank, elbows underneath your shoulders. If you wanna add on, inhale, inhale, your left leg up, lower. Inhale, inhale, your right leg up, lower. Inhale, inhale, lower. Slip, step, lower. Slip, step. You're lifting up from where your booty meets your hamstring. Not your hips, your hips stay low. Where your, your gluteal smile is, where your booty makes a smile with your hamstring. One more on each, sniff, 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 recover. You guys are doing great. We're gonna add on um, some of my favorite postures. I feel like I say that every time. For the back, put your foam roller here. Lower your belly here. All right, this is gonna be swans. These are some of my favorites because most people forget about posture and that's what it's gonna keep us younger and healthier and the nervous system wants it and the energy wants to feel good so we're going to inhale and lift up extensions usually create invigoration a sense of readiness and confidence so we're helping our energy even when we're helping our bones and muscles so exhale lower now press your elbows strong into that foam roller if you have a longer foam roller i'm using my trail my uh, travel one you can put your arms out wider than i am Inhale, lift. I love it. I'm looking at you for form. So once you get a feel of what we're doing, you can look straight ahead. Now the reason, keep going. The reason I'm pressing with my pinky side of my hand more is because the serratus is neurologically tied to the pinky. So basically I'm telling my shoulder blades to get down the back by pressing more into the pinky side of my hand. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry. Just push into the pinky side and your body will know what to do. Lower down. Act like there's a piece of ice underneath your belly button. Lift your abs so they don't just collapse into the floor. Press into the foam roller. You're gonna feel your lats. You're gonna feel your scapula stabilizers, but you're not gonna feel any tension in the neck. And lower. We're doing it again. Hamstrings, glutes. Lift up, thoracic extensors, those back muscles that keep your spine upright so we don't get rounded forward. That's what would happen without our intervention. The back and keep it forward like all the tasks and tests do. So it's critical. Great. Okay, let's do it again. They're so fun. Up. Press. Five. Four. I love how the shoulder blades are down the back. Good. Shereen. Three. Two. All right, we're going to do it again. Change your arms if you need to. Inhale, lift. Otherwise, you're just doing this hands on the floor. All right, hold. And let this posture be normal for your body. Your body is natural here. It's normal here. 
It likes extension. Breath through the upper back. Exhale, lower. Now, if you need a child's pose, take it now. I'm gonna show you how you can use your, your foam roller to rest your arms on and then kind of drop your head down the middle and it gives you just a little easier chest stretch. Five, four, three, two. Come on back to that extension. Lie on your belly. Now, in no left in the Blade down the back. Your lats are working. Your upper back is working. Your belly's pulling away from the floor like there's a piece of ice underneath it so you're not just collapsing in your low back, which is up accidentally our tendency. All right, one more each. We're doing it. Inhale, touch. Inhale, touch. Both arms on. Set the extension. Set the tone for your body. This is our normal. And exhale, lower down. Child pose. Great job, guys. Child pose. Rest. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, we're gonna use this thing for, for good. The foam roller is gonna be our IT. I'm gonna give you something if you can't do, if you don't have a foam roller, but you're gonna put yourself in a side plank. So we're always using our stabilizer. Elbow down, put this foam roller between your greater trochanter of your hip and your knee. Don't roll out your knee ever, but just roll this way. If you don't have a foam roller, um, Holly, you might like lying on your back, lifting your leg up and doing a hamstring stretch. So this would be the backup plan. Otherwise, let's get that IT. The IT is fascia, iliotibial band, runs from the uh, hip down to the knee, just below the knee. And, and a lot of times it won't tell you it's tight. It'll just say, hey, my hip hurts or my knee hurts. And it's um, a great little tool to see if that, if you roll this out, a great little uh, experiment to see if that's what's been creating your lateral knee pain or your lateral uh, hip pain. I've got good shoulder blade stability on the arm that's holding me up. So just notice how does my IT feel here? You're running an inventory without judgment. Now I like to deviate from a little bit. Is that TFL muscle where the front hip is? And there's a lot of tightness there secondary hip flexor and it gets over recruited sometimes as a primary or if you just had to sit a long time or your sport demands it. So just explore though. Now if you have a really um, intense exquisite point of pain, you have a trigger point, you can rest on it and breathe and hold maybe 90 seconds and release it. It'll, you'll feel the fibers change. Good. You see how this foot takes some of the intensity off. All right, just take five, four, three. And I know Shereen, you always like hamstrings, so you can kind of roll back and get that lateral hamstring. That's the of uh, the, the hamstrings. That's the one that is a nemesis and knee pain as well. So you can get all sorts of things. Just don't roll out your knee itself. All right, take a moment, sit down, and do a little. Can you feel the difference in your body? Like right now, this leg's a little longer. I can feel a difference. I didn't have any pain coming into it, but just see what do you feel? Less pain or less tightness? Let's do the other side. It's going to be great. Now, if you have one leg that tends to run shorter than the other, you might spend more time on the leg that is uh, sh shorter. So mine's my left, for example. You're rolling out between the hip and the knee. Your um, bottom arm is really strong, so you're never hurting yourself to help another body part and try some deviations. Maybe rotate forward. Maybe rotate back. If you're not with the foam roller, then you might be doing a hamstring stretch. And if you're doing a hamstring stretch, you're only gonna stretch out the belly of the muscle, never the knee, never the sit bone. You don't wanna tear, you wanna stretch the belly of it. Back and forth. So this one, this uh, area tends to be tight for people. So I'm interested to see how you're doing. I know some of you emailed me your request about this. Roll forward, get that, 
that tensor fascia lata, it sounds like a fancy drink at Starbucks, but it's this three inch wide muscle right here where your left pocket is. When you roll over it, you'll know. That it. keep breathing. Sometimes when we're in pain, our, our primal brain shuts off and just starts uh, holding our breath. So keep the breath. That tells your parasympathetic system all is well. We're here to heal. We're here to rejuvenate. All is good. Good, good hormonal cocktail of, of de-stressing. Back and forth. There is a trick where you can pump that bottom knee and bend it if you want a little more. All right. Yep. Good, Karen. Ten. These are great for you. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four. So what do you notice? Without judgment, what do you notice? Like my left leg is a lot tighter. When I used to bike ride and race bikes, my left hip would hurt ache at night a little bit. My left leg's a little shorter. And all I'd have to do is roll out my left IT for two minutes and it'd be all gone. All it was, it was a feeling of arthritis, but it really was just that IT was tight. So come on out. Let that go, see if it feels amazing. Good. All right, we're gonna do another little thing for the lats. This is really good if you have internally rotated arms, which most of us do, and um, good for back posture. So take this roller here. Uh, hold there, Polly, I'm gonna show you a stretch. For the lat, access the backside of that armpit. Roll it out, roll it out. And it's like you're getting the back part of the armpit, you may have to roll up or down a little make sure your neck's not hurting yes Polly perfect that's exactly what I was going to say your lat stretching and you might rotate forward and back now if you have a hot spot on that rear deltoid I do then roll that out too roll and you see how you're just using your legs some people have a little tricep tightness I find that part of the lat it's accessible right there it twists it attaches on the inner tubercle groove it is a big nemesis for back pain, even all the way down here because the lat attaches from your arm to your hip. And it's a big nemesis with shoulder issues, adhesive capsulitis, rotated shoulder, uh, just posture issues where you're internally rotated, where your upper back's getting rounded. So this is a big hitter. You can take care of a lot of body issues just with this little rat lat rollout. So hold, let's breathe, five. Again, if you have a trigger spot and you need to sit on it, if you have an exquisite point of pain, you can sit on it and breathe and change its function, maybe 90 seconds. Sometimes you can have less time than that. But I'm just gonna roll. I'm just sort of pervasively feeling it in my in my own practice right now. I don't have any bad trigger points. Do what you need to do though. All right, take another inhale. And on your exhale, come up. We can do a little test. Notice how that feels. Breathe into that spot. You want your body to know this is the new pattern. This is the new normal. And now just to see what's the other side feel like. A little sticky, a little fascia, a little tight. Let's do that other side. I can't wait. You ready? All right, grab it. Okay, IT or not IT, lat. You're rolling on the back of that armpit. Your body is just sort of inchworming back and forth. Please take any uh, individual flavoring with this. If you have a spot that you need, please do it. Maybe yours is back. So I like to give the, the major cues with anatomy. And then we've all had different lives up to this habit of different sports, different patterns. So you can add your own flavor as I call out the cues. It's like I'm offering you food at a buffet. You just take what you need to make this work for you. Like on that left shoulder, I've got a rear delt spot that wasn't on the right one. So that's an example. You just, you're learning about your body without judgment. You're giving it what it needs. Sometimes you can tell which arm is your dominant arm when you roll these lats out. You guys look great. Good. Very good, Polly. Good, Shireen. And good, Karen. Nice, Betty. Good breathing. Good, Jean. Five. Four, three, two, and one. And then take a moment, see how you feel. And we're gonna lie down and do Shavasana. Um, yeah, sorry, huh? Stretch. <laughs>
See, isn't that so much nicer? I could stay here all day with you. It's so fun to work out the body like this. So if you need more time, please do. I am gonna take a moment for Shavasana because so many of us are contractors and we're really prepared, fight, flight, fawn, or, or a feign response. So we wanna know how to relax the body and give the parasympathetic system its chance. I'm gonna use this roller for me on the knees and we're just gonna take a minute. So give yourself a minute to not think about anything in the past, anything in the future. This is precious time to be in this moment. Let your body just relax. Imagine you're on a beautiful blue blow up inflatable kayak on Whedon Island in the beautiful clear water underneath the mangrove, the lights trickling through, nourishing you with vitamin D for your immunity. Ibis birds, white birds are in the mangroves as you float down carelessly, peacefully, rejuvenating. And as you float down the mangrove, your body is getting better, healing. You have clarity on the right and left side of the brain. The nervous system is calm. The organs are refreshed. There's a sense of fortuity for this awesome body that got us through this class and how thankful we are that it worked for this amazing breath that's allowing us to be on this earth right now in this moment and how precious that is, how sacred the breath is. Give yourself permission to acknowledge the power of now, to feel the presence of life force in your body, in your mind, and in your spirit. Take a moment to notice how it feels to be in this beautiful state of homeostasis on your blue kayak on the water of Whedon Island, getting heal, healing through the nourishment of the mangroves and the sun. Notice if any ideas or images come for further ways that you can continue self-care during your day today and honor those. Notice how good it feels when you make a promise to yourself to honor another way to give yourself further care maybe just a cup of hot tea with ginger or more water with lemon, reading a good passage, how it feels good to take care of yourself. As you're ready, begin to awaken your fingers and toes and come up towards a seated position and face me. You can let yourself be as soft as you can, as little effort as you can, embracing this day. Let one hand come to your heart and let the other hand cover it. You're making contact with that sense of peace that's inside your body, mind, and spirit right now. Set a tone and an intention for further self-care today, even if it's just one sacred act. And whenever you're ready, allow your eyes to open and come back into the room. And I'm wishing you love and peace the rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a fabulous day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. My beautiful friends with us today. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Love you. Bye.